With Tropical Storm bearing down on Starbase this week, crews were hard at work to keep operations moving forward. Construction of the new Sarens Crane continues, as well as work on Booster 15, the second launch tower, and the new office building. Now let's dig into this week's update. Early on Friday morning, construction crews began placing more concrete at the ground level of the new office building. A wall section for the second launch tower's base was picked up by the LR-11000 ahead of installation and relocated near the Grove Crane. Concrete was placed near the front entrance of Mega Bay 2, firming up the groundwork at the site. Back at the launch complex, piling work continued at the second tower construction site with the continuous flight auger drilling holes for new piles. Once drilled out, a rebar cage is lowered into the hole, making it ready to be filled with concrete so it can bear the loads of a tower, launch pad, rockets, and other heavy machinery. Crews were also at work on one of the Booster 15's liquid oxygen tank sections outside of Mega Bay 1, inspecting and surfacing the edges of the section walls ahead of assembly and welding. A new corner column for the second launch tower was lifted from where it was staged the day before and set down at its final position on the tower foundation. The front section of the CC-8800-1 crane superstructure was delivered to the launch site and staged along the roadside ahead of installation. Assembly of the CC-8800-1 crane continues with the installation of the superstructure frame. The 43 metric ton frame was lifted with the LR-11000 and set down on the slewing unit so that workers could begin connecting the pieces together. Back at the build site, an excavator began breaking up the concrete pad at the site of the old ring yard. After more than 10 hours on site, workers completed the placement of the concrete at the office building construction site and began packing up the pump truck. While assembly of the tower's base level was underway, workers also began installing the CC-8800's winches on the crane superstructure. The first beam between the new columns was hoisted into position, stabilizing the columns ahead of installation of the first blast wall at the tower's base. Meanwhile, the second winch for the new Saren CC-8800 crane was brought up and put into place. While this was underway, iron workers were eventually able to get the beam lowered into place as well. As the iron workers continued to install the beam, the third and final winch was installed on the crane. With the winches installed now, the next phase of crane assembly could begin. The first prefabricated steel wall section of the second tower base was lowered into place. These prefabricated steel segments, held together with spanning ties, will be filled with concrete to add strength and rigidity to the tower. As indicated by the siding of another pump truck, concrete placement continued in Mega Bay 2 as teams continue to build out the facilities and floors. Following the initial placement, the wall section that had been set down at the base of the tower was lifted up again and workers were quick to adjust the segment's positioning before lowering it back down, guiding it by hand for the final placement. Following a slight lull in activity, additional components for the new CC-8800 were delivered to the launch site in the evening. Later that night, an inspection crew working from a boom lift began looking over the remaining vertical cryotank shells as work continues to demolish the decommissioned tanks. The fourth and final base column was lowered into place shortly before midnight. This column features additional attachment points for the drawworks hoist and other hardware that drives the tower's major systems. Saturday morning saw the fourth column unexpectedly removed from the tower base and set down off of the foundation. Half an hour after the column was removed, the issue that caused its removal was resolved and work began to set the column back into place. Another bracing beam was installed on the tower's base in the afternoon, rigidly tying another pair of columns together. Construction of Booster 15's LOX tank section is nearing completion now, with the liquid oxygen tank having now reached 20 out of 24 ring segments in height. After being damaged in the previous launch, the ship quick disconnect panel arms position adjustment hydraulics were repaired. After helping out with the assembly of the Saren's owned CC-8800, SpaceX's LR-11000 went back to the tank farm to resume scrapping the vertical tanks. Back at the build site, a new booster downcomber was lifted into Mega Bay 1 for installation on Booster 15. 
and early on Wednesday morning, with rain falling and Tropical Storm Alberto set to make landfall in short order, the cryotank that was stored at Sanchez was relocated to the site. More of the metal form walls were lowered into place between the columns of Tower 2 and most of the prefabricated sections are now in place and awaiting welding. This week at Cape Canaveral saw preparations at LC-39A, raising the transporter erector to vertical for the upcoming launch of Falcon Heavy, currently scheduled to lift off on June 25th. The payload for this mission will be GOES U, the fourth and final GOES R series geostationary weather monitoring satellite for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The spacecraft also carries a compact coronagraph for monitoring space weather. On Monday, Blue Origin support vessel Harvey Stone had several containers placed on deck, and by Tuesday morning, installation began of the ray domes that will help facilitate the ship's communication systems. Falcon 9 Booster 1080 made its ninth flight on Thursday, carrying the Astra 1P SES-24 satellite into a geostationary transfer orbit. This satellite is a Thales Alenia space-built telecommunications satellite, providing TV broadcasts for audiences in France and Germany. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, guys, and thanks for watching. Lab Padres out.